Ah, during the summer, you just must come to the seaside Absolutely. for the day because there's the sun, the sand, the sea, and perhaps even an ice cream. So let's start, start the, the show. show. Breathe it all in, Paul. Now, we do have to let you into a little secret. If you've seen some of our episodes before, you might have already picked up on the fact that we're not actually at the seaside at all. We are standing on sand. There is a beach, of course. There's a, there is sea behind us. You can even smell the sort of the, the seaside. And there's ice cream. But no, we are at Ryslip Lydum. It's a massive beach. Wow. Yeah outside Ryslip, so in Greater London, not Central London. And there's this mass of water behind us there here. Are some animals um, swimming in the are, background. Yeah, there are lots of birds, lots of wildlife around here. And there's also a wood, which we are going to have a little walk into as well, because on a really hot day like this, and I'm wearing my cap for protection. You need some shade. I need some shade. But first of all, let's take a little look around the beach. Remember that famous time when we came here after getting one of our COVID jabs and I don't know what it was, perhaps it was the elation of getting it, but for some reason I stood here on the beach and I spun round and round and round for 30 seconds. Absolutely stupid of course, not realising that you get so dizzy that when you stop you want to go the opposite direction and I fell. Almost split my head open on a concrete piece of brick or something that was sticking out here on the beach and I think I broke your... What did I bring? Your glasses case or something? You sort of like dented two of them. Two of your, your pairs of glasses? No, like the case. The case? The, why did I have the case? Or did I fall on top of you or something? You fall on top of my bag. Oh, I see. It broke my fall. Oh, right. It's a lot quieter down this end, Paul, and that is because we are beyond the point of salvation. In other words, there's no lifeguard or anything down here. I didn't think that they had lifeguards here anyway. Well, there's a they sign have. there. I don't know if they've got lifeguards, but basically um, this area is not safe for sort of going into the water. There's nobody would be watching you down here. And it is a little bit sort of <laughs> mucky. Mu mucky and muddy anyway. Oh. But that's fine because at least we are away from people. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm like? I don't like crowds. I think I see some swans right down there all the way. Wow. On the other side of this um, yeah. light up. I'm not sure if we can pick that up, but there's two little white dots over there. There are more than two little Oh, I dots. can even, even with my eyesight, I can actually make out one of them fluttering its tail feathers. I wonder whether they had any babies. Ooh. Be very wary of approaching the swan. <laughs> it's not only swans. 
I think, are these ducks? I think they are. These are the ones that have the scary eyes. Ah, yes. If you saw one of our parks episode um, uh. specials, uh, I think it was at Hyde Park. And yeah, uh -huh. we saw the ducks with the really weird eyes there as well. Well, there are people out swimming or at least bobbing around. I don't think Is I'd want cool? to be in that. I don't, well, I'm not sure. It's probably cleaner than most of the rivers in England, that's for sure. Um, but of course, I can't swim anyway, so I'm not going to be uh, going out into the water. And who wants to see me in the flesh? Not even Bob. <laughs> so there's the little narrow gauge railway. You'll be seeing more of that at the end of the episode. There is also a wet shower, wet play area right behind me, and it's ideal for parents and kids that don't really want to go into the actual Lido. Yes, I think it is worth saying that there are changing facilities here. I'm not sure if you have to pay, um, but to actually just come here, it's free. You can just walk around mm. or sit on the beach or whatever, or even maybe have an ice cream. Hmm, that's given me an idea. I don't know if you make out, but there's lots of little dragonflies today. Oh, little sort of like blue. No, they were like little... Yeah. Flies. Yeah, little things flying around. <laughs> and there are toilet facilities because I am desperate to go to the toilet right now. And I think that they are clearly marked gentlemen, ladies, and then they, they also have some disabled ones on the corner right there. And there are also uh, toilet facilities at the entrance to the whole Lido complex as well. And I think at the halfway point oh, right. too, okay. yeah, if you're walking along. If you wanna go stargazing in London, there's not that many places because of the bright lights of the city, but Rice Up Lido does offer nighttime tours where you can look at the night sky, such as Saturn, perhaps. Alas, there's no sign of Uranus today. Oh, look what I got. Oh, look Two at that. Two delicious cones. And they were £3 each, is that right? £3.50, so oh, seven. £3.50 each, okay. And it only came in one size. So I'll hand you yours now, Paul. Which in this one? Yeah. You got it, okay? Yeah. And I think we've got to do the Morelli's test. Mmm. Oh, yeah. This is nice. Is it? Mmm. This is actually quite good. You are very, very particular. I'm very, very picky when it comes to ice cream. You are. But this is quite creamy. Mm. I think because it's run by the console, it has to meet certain standards. I would say that's probably what it is. Ah. Mm. Yeah, not too bad. Are you filming this in a different standard? 4K. This, this looks different. Now, I just hope that this doesn't mess up my configurations for this episode, Paul, because I haven't been using 4K. I didn't even know that we could. So it may be so, that some of our future episodes might be all in 4K. Because I, how to do it. I felt like my footage was kind of glary. Ah, well, yes, yours was a little bit glary. But I think 4K... Mm. It doesn't really look glary. Mm. No, we just have to see how it turns out. Hopefully it's as good as this ice cream. Well, the beach is just behind us. But in front of us is Ricelip Woods. And on a really hot day, it's good to get some shade as well. So let's take a look around.
Uh, Paul, mm. Paul, see the sign over here for the one public that's footpath. Lopsided. Yeah, do you know what that reminds me of? No. Wasn't there like a crossroads or some sort of sign in um, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe? And uh, it was near Mr. Tumnus's house or something. And it was in the snow. Or am I just imagining things now? One of my weird dreams, perhaps. Oh, look over there. What's that? There's a sign that says T on the tree. <laughs> What do you think the T stands for, Paul? Tree? <laughs> well, possibly. But I think it means that it's time for us to take the train. If you don't fancy walking around, you can also take the train which is coming just behind me. Oh wow, right on cue. So we've just seen the train honk its horn and it's just the one that we saw earlier. It came in and then it went on the turntable behind me here. And that's the engine I'm talking about, of course, because the carriages are actually over there on the other platform. I better go in. Well, we are on platform two. It's quite a long train. But the thing is, huh. during the summer, would you want to sit outside and get your head burnt <laughs> like no. me? I do have a cat with me. Um, or shall we sit in one of the inside carriages? Yes, please. I think I need to be undercover. You could always sit in the <laughs> buggy wagon. Isn't that right, Paul? Oh, Come on, Paul, oh, get yourself in yeah. here. <laughs> so we're starting the journey at Willow Lawn. Now, get your your map out because there is a stop, I think, at the halfway point. But we're taking it all the way. And then we're taking it all the way back. To right? the beach and all the way back. Now, of course, when you watch this, you will have already seen our beach part of the episode. So have a look at the map. It's upside down, my dear. I'm trying to do this. Right, so I can see Willow Lawn Station. Then there is Haste Hill Station, that's the halfway point. And then Woody Bay. Did you say Haste Hill? Haste Hill, yes. <laughs> and then Woody Bay is the final destination. And that is where the beach and the wood, funny enough, is. Marcus, I think it's a good idea that we are doing this while everyone is at lunch because they will probably come on to this right after they finish eating. Yes, that's true. I it's think that was a... one of the reasons why I wanted to come as soon as. Uh, it's not actually that busy. Well, at the moment, it's quite a long train. And I guess on a day like this, people will like to sit outside, except me, who wants to be under a bit of uh, cover. Shade. The railway is run by volunteers, and here is a note from Jeff from Rysenup. He says, having lived locally all my life, I can remember coming to the Lido when I was a child and a thrill of a ride on the railway. After I retired, I thought that my engineering background might be of some help to the railway, so I joined the Wednesday gang, who maintain all of the rolling stock to ensure that everything is safe. Well done, Jeff. Good on you. You can see that the train is sort of quite long there behind us. A few carriages that we walked past on our way here. You might be able to make out the steam generating just on the lower part of the, uh, the carriages running underneath the platform at the moment. The whistles blowing. The horns tooted. 
we're moving. I hear the brakes releasing and we are off. Now, if you are coming to Ryslip Lido, there is a decent sized car park. It's run by the local council, I believe, uh, but it does fill up quite quickly. There is an overspill car park as well, and I think it's pay and display, at least it used to be. We came by bus today, we got the H13 from Ryslip, and it leaves every 20 minutes. And the cost of this little train ride today was four pounds return each. Well, on a really hot day like this, it is nice to sit in the cool. You get a nice breeze underneath these trees here as we head along to the first stop, which will be Haste Hill. Yeah, you can see people on the path as you walk around. We get a little look at the uh, engine up here at the front, I think, as we turn around this corner. And yes, here we are coming to the first stop. Actually, it's not stopping here. It's going right past Haste Hill. Haste ye back. Oh, look at the little gnome. Oh. Oh, look, there's a few gnomes out. Look, they're all sitting out enjoying the sunshine today. We'll get another view of the uh, engine here as we go around this corner. And you get a good view of the train behind us, the back of us here as well. I absolutely love this breeze, I have to say. Oh, it's lovely. I could just feel the wind blowing through my hair. Well, of course, you don't need to take the train around the Lido. As Paul said, you could walk. But it's, it's nice. These narrow gauge railways, I really love them. Oh, and we're going to get a really good view of another train coming up, the one going the other direction. See the light there in the distance. There it says at the front. Ryslip Lider Railway. Oh, look, and there, ah, there's a single track. So they've just handed the little token over. There's the buggy wagon. Quite a long train they're running actually, both directions today. And I think also coming up, there is the works depot as well. And sometimes you can actually see them tinkering on the engines because of course the volunteers will be um, upkeeping the maintenance of the rolling stock as well. Little animals out. Oh, this is just lovely. And apologies if you can't hear what I'm saying, but just enjoy the ride, I think. Right, so we are indeed coming up to the maintenance depot. So you'll be able to see some of the other rolling stock there. Graham Alexander, that one's called, that engine. There's another engine in there. It's fantastic, look at it. And we are coming round to 
our final destination, which is Woody Bay, I think it was called. Mm. Yeah, Woody Bay for the beach. And as you've been watching this, you've already seen us at the beach, but we haven't been to the beach yet. And the engine's being prepared now for its return journey. Keeping it nice and watered on a hot day like this. Well, we do have our return journey on the train and we'll be back after this. Oops, you didn't subscribe, but there's still time. Just hit the subscribe button for It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Welcome back to the train at Woody Bay and we are just waiting for our departure. Have you enjoyed your day here at the Lido, Paul? A departure makes it sound like we are flying. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will be flying. It does do quite a bit of a speed. <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah, it's been quite good. I don't think we've been here for a while. Um, it's been really good weather. I think the previous times that we came, it wasn't the best of weather, was it? No. Well, I don't want to crow too much, but I would say that the highlight for me was definitely the ice cream. It's right up there with Morelli's. <clears throat> Look, I've still got a frog in my throat because it was just so delicious and I can still taste it. And I don't normally eat cones these days. I'm worried that I'm going to like rip my teeth out, but the cone was actually <laughs> absolutely fine and my teeth survived. My dentist will be very pleased to hear that. What you, Jason, if you're watching? <laughs> Well, we hope that you have enjoyed today's episode from Ricelip Lido. And look, the little train is chopping along right now. Let's have a little look as it passes. And as the passengers get on for their journey, our journey has come to an end.
But before you go, for those of you that have liked today's episode, give us a thumbs up. For those of you that haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. And for those of you that want to leave a comment, you can do so as well. And if you'd like to buy us a coffee to help us along the way, there is a link in the description. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.